All right, what's up, everybody? <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever. Ugh, I'm, man, is my body trying to burp? <laughs> whatever it is, when you watch this video, let's make it apply. Let's do that over. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is, when you watch this video, just make it apply. Uh, one of the things I always do with my cards is I always put the cards upright before reading. So if you get a reversal, you're imbalanced <laughs> because um, I make sure the cards are upright. So um, here we go. Another channel message. You know, um, Spirit gave me something completely different this morning, but I... Um, shoot, I was busy. I had to go to a meeting and stuff like that, so I didn't have time to do a reading. And so because of that, I ended up forgetting the channel message, but Spirit gave me a completely different uh, channel message for um, this evening. Um, so let's get through this spiel. Remember, this is a general message, so it might, uh, so it's not going to resonate with everyone. It's not going to, it's not going to resonate with everyone. The whole message might not even resonate with everyone that it might just be bits and pieces that resonates remember to take only what resonates because divination is confirmation you know it's that you know it's it's not it's really not the the the, the revealing of something you know it's just confirmation it's what your spiritual team has already told you and that's why when you read it it's like a, a light bulb it's like oh yeah that's what it meant when they sent me 1111. That's what it meant when they sent me 444. That's what it meant when they sent me 17. That's what it meant when they showed me the insect. That's what it meant when they showed me the animal. Um, remember guys to check out my uh, website to order my book, The, Emer the Emerging Butterfly, Begin Your Spiritual Awakening. Um, the purple book is the actual book that's going to go through every single chapter. And then you have the blue book, which is the workbook. Every chapter has a homework assignment. It's telling you to, to do something, whether it's, you know, meditation, whether it's writing down what it is that you truly desire. There's so many homework assignments. It's going to be a homework assignment for every single chapter. All right, and oh, once again, you can get it from uh, www.rashadking.com. I'll make sure to, uh, to put the link in the bio. If you guys want to sign up for a personal reading, personal readings are $80, and uh, you can hit me up on Instagram. And the way that it works, um, I'll send you my Cash App. You'll pay the $80 through Cash App. Uh, you'll send me the screenshot that you paid it. And then that's when we'll set up a time and date. Whatever time we set up, it is going to be Arizona time. So just keep that in mind. You know, I know most people are um, about like two hours or three hours ahead of me. So just keep that in mind. It will be, you know, um, Arizona time. And um, let's see, anything else before we get into the channel message? Um, I believe that that covers our basis. Um, man, it's, it's the end of the month again. I'm dreading having to do Zodiac sign readings. <laughs> Man, zodiac sign readings, they they pull so much energy because I think with the zodiac sign reading, you're 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 channeling so many different people, you know, and you get those um so many like but it could be an hour reading and every five minutes is a different person that you could be channeling energy from. You know, the channel messages are the same, but I don't know, the channel messages I just like them a whole lot better. Um but the Zodiac, Zodiac takes so much energy. Majority, sometimes when I um, do readings, I have to, um, I have to take a break. I have to rest because, you know, people don't realize how much, uh, how much channeling someone's energy, how much energy it actually takes from you. Um, the channel message um, today, you know, uh, Spirit was like, look, y'all got to remember, you know, stop treating your ancestors and your Orishas like prostitutes. You know, it's some of you, you literally only call on them in time of need. You only feed them in time of need. You only acknowledge them in time of need. And spirituality is not like that. Spirituality is a lifestyle that every single day you are honoring and acknowledging the ancestors and the Orishas. That 
even in the time of good, that you are just like, you know, man, thank you, Oshun, for this love and this marriage that you brought me. And you cherish that every single day. And you just don't call on her when things are going bad. Where it's like, Oshun, what type of man did you bring me? You know, this person undid this and that. And it's like, let's, let's think and communicate with Oshun throughout the whole entire process. Not when, you know, things are, you know, going down. Because, you know, uh... Spirit was saying that, you know, some of you, um, that was the reason for the ending of your relationship is that the only way that you can ascend the way that you're supposed to is by being alone. It's because as soon as somebody come in your life, you forget about your spiritual life. You like ancestors who? Orishas who? And then, you know, you can even be getting people coming in and saying, Oh, I think this negative, I think this witchcraft, you need to stop it. And now you completely abandoned your spiritual team just to be with somebody on the physical level. Like, y'all be real. You know, like nothing is going to separate me from my God. Nothing is going to separate me from my deities. Nothing is going to separate me from my ancestors. Thank you, Igun. Thank you, spirit guys. Thank you, ancestors. Thank you, Sarah Banda. Thank you, Arisha. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Ola Dumare. Thank you, Ola Rune. Thank you, Ola Fee. Please bless this reading. Give the people exactly what it is that they need to hear. Ashe Amen. And some of you, you know, Spirit is saying that you need to learn how to give thanks. You know, um, you're so focused on what you don't have. You know, oh, I don't have this yet. Oh, I don't have that yet. And that's the thing that's keeping you down. That's the thing that's keeping you depressed. And that's the thing that's keeping a dark cloud around you. And you're thinking that people are still doing witchcraft against you. You think that the, um, Elijah, did that say a door was opening? Yeah. What door opened? Oh, the back door. Um, uh, that was the security system. It was like, um, it was saying a door open. She was, that's a, that's a channel of message. Somebody is getting, a, a door is getting ready to open. And that is something that, um, I wanted to talk about as well is that, you know, um, Blessings are getting ready to come in, but, you know, um, in order for you to stay encouraged, you have to understand how it works. You know, your ancestors are your first line of defense and they are on this physical plane and they are able to give you blessings just like that because they're on the same plane as you, even though they're um, in the still in the spirit realm that they're invisible um, to the eye. They're still here with us, walking among us, that you can see the spirits moving around your home and moving around you, protecting your home, your space, and everything else. And so normally your ancestors can give you a blessing, shoots within 24 hours, shoots within an hour. You know, um, it doesn't take long for them to give you a blessing. But sometimes we need to escalate things to the Orishas. That, you know, sometimes we need to, hey, Elegwa, we need you to open the door. You know, Ogun, we need you to clear the path. And, you know, the Orishas are, um, are different, you know, um, even though it's said that, you know, um, you have, you know, Eshu, Ogun, and, um, I believe it's Ochosi, they say that, you know, no matter what they, you know, um, I believe it, it was said that they stay here, you know, um, but you have your other Orishas that they eventually leave and go back to the heavenlies and then they come down when they need to you know, when they need to help and when they need the, uh, um, when they need to assist. And so, um, the, the Orishas, they live in the heavenlies. And so whenever you're calling on something from the heavens, you know, whether it's the Orishas or whether it's, you know, Oladumare, God of the earth, whether it's, um, Olarum, God of the heavens, or whether it's Olafi, the mediator between the two, it takes them longer to come down because they're coming from the heavenlies. They're not on the same plane as us. And there is a big difference between the ancestors and the Orishas. Because the ancestors are here on this plane with us and they lived, um, even though the Orishas have lived carnated lives as well, but because the ancestors are here on this plane with us, that they, they see everything that we're going through and they, you know, um, had similar lives, it's easy for them to relate. It's easy for them to say, you know, oh, you know, um, I can understand why you're feeling this, you know, sense of loneliness, you know, etc. You know, but the Orishas are a little bit different in their approach because they're 
they're, they're further away, you know, and with them being further away, not only in distance, it makes them a little bit further away with our problems as well that, you know, um, sometimes they look down and they like, okay, I can't relate. I don't know why you're breaking down, you know, over a breakup, you know, this person was harming you. So, you know, keep that in mind as well. But, you know, um, we always say, you know, like, God, why do you take, why do you take so damn long? You know, God takes so long that they even have a saying for God that he might not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. And it's like, what clock were you looking at? What watch were you looking at? Because it's like, I needed you two months ago, but you got to keep in mind, they're not on this plane with us. They are in the heavenlies. And so it takes time. You know, even when you um, read the Painted Keys, which are the sacred stories, how it said that, you know, um, Oladumare and, you know, Ogun, they came down on a, um, on a, on a rope, on a chain that they came down uh, to the earth. So it takes them time. But when they get here, they show out, you know, when they get here, you know, that's when they like, okay, yeah, you messed with the wrong, you know, you messed with the wrong person. So just keep that in mind. You know, um, the ancestors will send you all types of, or the Orishas will send you all types of signs. You will see flickering of the lights. You know, uh, when you are putting light in your candle, it's crackling. Crackling mean that someone is trying to communicate with you. Those are all signs where it's like things are getting ready to come. You just got to hold on and keep your faith. You will start seeing things breaking like glass and stuff breaking around the house. The breaking of glass means the breaking of a dimension. It means the breaking of a barrier. And so things are coming more and more. I know that, you know, uh, one time I really needed all your help. And, you know, because Oya is my um, head Arisha. And I was keep calling the Oya and calling the Oya. And as days was going by, I was keep hearing a thunder sound. And like it, um, it, the more and more that um, Oya was getting closer and closer to me, the thunder sound was louder and louder. And I'm just like looking outside, trying to see if it's raining and stuff like that. Clear as day. You know, good day outside and everything, but I was the only one hearing thunder. And then the moment that um, Oya came, man, she showed out. She gave me the blessing that I was looking for plus more. But, you know, you get those blessings because you don't prostitute them out. You know, you, you, you know, not only do you call on them in times of bad, but you, you're still with them in the times of, you know, triumph, in the time of, you know, um, happiness and success, you know, stop prostituting your team out. That's one of the reasons why they like, okay, look, you can wait another month because this is the only month I'm going to get my offering. This is the only month. This is the only month I'm going to get some acknowledgement and some love. So let me let you sit here for the next two months. You know, that's the only time I'm going uh, I'm to get some stuff from you. Stop prostituting them out. You know, when you build that, you know, we learn this in elementary. When you build those relationships with people, they last. They give you, you know, when you build those successful relationships, you are able to get more from that person. And it's the same way with the Orishas. I love the difference between the Orishas and Jesus. With Jesus, Jesus is just so perfect. Jesus don't do any wrong. You know, it's, it's just like, you know, no matter what, you you curse Jesus out. Jesus is like, other cheek, other cheek. You know, the Orishas are not. I love how in all of the painted keys in the, um, in the, man, what's the, um, what's the, what's the thing for the Bible? The, um, I can't think of it now. The, um, man, I can't think of it. Well, I'll just say the painted keys for now. Man, I can't think of what, um, the Bible is. In, the Odu Ifa. Odu Ifa, that's what it is. So with the Odu Ifa and the painted keys, it never paints the Orishas as perfect. You know, that they are learning and ascending just like we're learning and ascending. That, you know, you are like, you know, like when you hear the stories of, you know, like, you know, the Bible will tell you the story that, you know, um, 
that, you know, God was mad and he flooded the earth. But then you go over to African spirituality and it's like, you know, Ola Kuhn was so pissed that he flooded the entire earth that Obatala had to come down and chain Ola Kuhn to the bottom of the sea just so that the earth will not be destroyed with water. I love how the Orishas are not perfect, that they learn just like we learn. You know, all the times that, you know, Oya have had to use, you know, um, or thunders and wind and all of this other stuff in order to um, in order to get back at Chango because he was just a cheater messing around with all these different women. You know, I love how it never paints the Orishas as perfect, but it paints them as holy. And so there's a big difference between the two that when you follow this concept of Jesus, that he never makes a mistake, that he is 100% perfect. And now we think that perfection is holiness. And so now we live under this illusion, trying to reach a level of perfection that we will never reach. And then all of the overwhelming emotions that is brought with that, because when you don't reach that level of perfection, it's now self imploding, where it's like, oh, I'm a fucking failure. Oh, why can't I do this? You know, why can't I, you know, beat this challenge of lust? Why am I so desperate? You know, why am I so this? And so you end up destroying yourself, trying to live up to a level of perfectionist that it was never meant for you to live. But when it comes to the Orishas, you know, even though we strive to be the best version of ourselves that we can be, we're not under this illusion of perfectionist, that we are like, oh, when we leave this earth, we're going to reach this state of, of holiness and you know, now everything is going to be better. And it's like, you know, no, you know, Chango's still a hoe, messing around with multiple people, you know, and, and you know, Obatala still made a mistake by getting drunk. And now this is why we have, you know, humans with disabilities and things like that. You know, I love the imperfection in the Orishas because now we separate the two, that there's a difference between perfectionists and holiness, and the two are not one and the same. And so you lose this falsehood of putting things in the closet and trying to make everybody see you as this perfect version of yourself. No, nobody is perfect. I love how the Orishas, they state that, that nobody is perfect. I love how in, um, I believe in, in it, it's uh, Hinduism, that they believe that nobody knows God, not even the Orishas. You know, well, they don't believe in the Orishas, so they're angels or whatever. That their deities don't even know who God is. So just like the humans don't know who God is, the deities don't know who God is, so that when God come in earthly form to the earth, he's judging both. He's judging your spiritual team and he's judging the human because God is God want to see how are you going to respond to me if I'm a stranger telling you, hey, I need five dollars in order for me to get home. I'm stuck. God want to see that if I was to come and wrestle you, will your spiritual team step in and say, who the fuck are you and why are you over my charge? Now I'm about to black your eye. And so it's a test for everybody. It's a test for the deity that is protecting you, that was assigned to protect you. It's a test for the human. And so, you know, I love things like that because once again, nobody is perfect. Nobody will ever reach this level of perfectionist. And that's what some of you have to realize. You know, that, that shoot, that's a message in and of itself, you know, and then, you know, I never understood how, you know, because it, it, this, this is, this is the message, <laughs> just the message, because, you know, there, there's somebody that is stuck under this illusion that holiness is perfection and it's far from the truth. 
And those two should have never been merged. And now because of that, you're hiding what you're doing in the dark as if it will never come out. And that is the first step of getting out of the darkness is acknowledgement that you're not perfect, acknowledgement that you fall short of the glory, acknowledgement that you have flaws like everybody else, but instead you're doing these things behind closed doors and then you're throwing your sin in the closet and putting the lock and everything on it and saying, I'll come back to you later Keep quiet. Don't make noise because I don't want nobody to know that you're in here. And then you're putting on this mask and then beating everybody else up. Beating everybody else up, giving them an illusion where it's just, that's what the Pharisees and the, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees did. All of these things that they did behind closed doors, all these things that they did when nobody else was watching, and they threw that in the closet, told it to be quiet, locked it up so that nobody can go into that closet, and then had the nerve to go out to the people and chastise them, punish them for things that they couldn't even do themselves. Why is it that you were having sex before marriage, but you got a whole friends with benefits in that closet? You know, it's like, you know, why are you, you know, uh, not praying all day on, um, on a holy day, but you only prayed for one minute and then you went upstairs and watched Netflix in the dark. And then the moment that somebody came to your house, you hurried up and turned it off. And now all of a sudden you, yes, Lord, hallelujah, God. No, <laughs> lose the fakeness. You're, you're living this fakeness because you're merging the two. You think that perfection and holiness is the same when they're not. You know, one of the best examples of that is look at David. David was an all-time whore. <laughs> he was in the complete ashe of Chango. <laughs> David was an all-time whore. And never once in the never once in the Bible did it say that David having all of these sexual partners that it was some wrong with that. Never once. The only time that God said anything about his sexual comp uh, his sexual little runs is when he ended up sleeping with one of his soldier wives. And even then, God never came down and said, "You nasty asshole." The only thing that God said was, why did you sleep with a woman that did not belong to you, that was married to another man? And then not only did you sleep with her, but then you put her husband on the front line so that he can die because you did not want to confess your sins to him. And you didn't want to make things right. That was the only time that God got on to David for all his little sexual journeys. But yet, God said that this was a man after his own heart. So clearly, if this is a man after his own, own heart that had, that we would say in our little holy high horse voice, this, this nigga ho. <laughs> That's not how God seen him. God never said that it was a problem. God just said you should have never, God said that even when he brought the prophet Nathan to put David in his place, he said that I gave you everything. I put everything before your feet. And it was one thing that you didn't have access to. And that was the fruit that you ate of. That was the thing that you um, wanted when you had all of these other concubines. You had all of these other wives. Clearly, perfectionist is not holiness. And you see that clearly in David's life. There's a difference between the two. David made so many mistakes that, like, some of y'all don't even want to acknowledge the fact that David had a, um, a, 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 a gay relationship when he was messing around with Jonathan. And so clearly, perfection and holiness is two different things, but yet we go around with our look, holy voice, you shouldn't be having sex with everybody because of, you know, uh, what do they call them, um... Uh, because of the soul ties and stuff like that. And yes, that stuff is important. You know, when you have sex with someone, their, their demons and stuff is being transferred to you. But we, 
we we want to walk around and punish people so bad because misery and misery love company. You're not punishing them for the sake of God. God can do that himself. You're doing it because it you punishing someone else, it makes you feel good. It makes it seem as if your demons is not that important now and that theirs is more. But get the plank out of your own eye first. Perfectionist, man. Uh, man, that's the truth. That's a message in and of itself. Don't even really need the cards. <laughs> Because so, some of you got to learn that there's a difference between the two. There's a difference between holiness and perfectionist, and you need to stop merging them together. Some of you are going through so much stuff because you want to be so perfect. Oh, I got to be so perfect for God. But God loved the whore. Look at Mary Magdalene. <laughs> oh, I got to be so perfect for God. But God loved the thief. He loved the tax collectors that was still in at the time, which was Matthew. Oh, I got to be so perfect for God. But God loved the person that was corrupt, which was Paul, and that murdered so many people. Oh, I got to be so perfect for God. But yet Christians and Muslims say that Abraham is their father and they still worship and acknowledge him to this day. And Abraham was the biggest liar in the Bible. And almost got so many people in trouble by keep telling people that Sarah was his wife. And then when people was trying to sleep with Sarah, God had to give all these people dreams and everything else. And in these intuitive messages saying, if you sleep with her, I will trouble you for the rest of your life. And they said, Abraham, why the fuck did you bring this trouble on me? <laughs> Abraham, well, 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 <laughs> well, well, she's very beautiful, and I thought that if I told you, you were going to kill me. There's a difference between perfectionist and holiness. You got to stop merging the two together. That is the thing that is destroying your life. You are not coming as you are and loving yourself even for the shadow side, even though you want to get rid of the shadow side. This self-condemnation, this self-destructive behavior, all because you're not living up to a bar that most people are not living up to. It's, you know, it's funny because this, this is the analogy that Spirit gave that, you know, you're looking at somebody that done got a, a full Brazilian butt lift. They done, they done went to the doctor, got a full Brazilian butt lift, and got the perfect behind, bouncing everywhere and everything. And now, you not knowing how they got it, you're trying to live up to that standard. You're trying... Uh, Elijah, what is that beeping? Let me, let me, Elijah, Ugh. okay, I'm back, <laughs> now where did I put my cards, now I left my cards down there checking on my son, oh man, <laughs> let me go get my cards, <laughs> okay, I'm like, man, Whew. that's a sign in and of itself, man, that's the one thing about the you know ancestors. They love electricity and, and um, electronics. I just have to make sure Elijah not doing anything. But some of you are trying to live this life of, of a perfectionist. And because of that, it's driving you down. You're like, oh... You know, uh, because um, Spirit said, some of you are like, oh, God said, you know, that we're supposed to love one another and stuff like that. And then you're overly doing it, that you think that everybody on this earth is your charge. That's not how it works. Everybody on this earth is not going to be your charge.
You're not meant for everybody, you know, and that's why the Bible say that out of all gifts, the strongest one is wisdom. And people are like, what? Wisdom beat love? Heck yeah, wisdom beat love. Because if you don't have the wisdom to know when to use your heart and when to when to say no, then yes, you know, love, love can easily be manipulated. Love can easily be abused. You see that all the time in relationships. Instead of you teaching somebody how to fish to provide for themselves, you just like, oh, in the spirit of love, I'm just going to give you my portion every single day. Why? How is that wisdom? Oh, in the, in the spirit of love, I'm just going to let you walk over me and take everything that I have. And then when you leave me because I'm dry, I'm not going to take any accountability and responsibility and say, I should have had wisdom. I'm going to reflect it all on you and say, you used and abused me. But how did they use and abuse you? Who opened that door? Who allowed? Who allowed such a thing to exist? And that's why when relationships end, yeah, you might have the person that had the, the obvious wrong. They had the obvious wrong by cheating on you and being disloyal. But you still have the wrong that is not so obvious of allowing them to do it and giving them the opportunity. Because it's like every time where it's like, oh, this man cheated on me and did this. But how many times did he do it? And then how many times did you not put your foot down? And everything you do, get wisdom. There's a reason why wisdom is important. Wisdom took over the Old Testament in the book of Proverbs. Wisdom took over the New Testament in the book of James. Wisdom is definitely important. I'm, I'm still on this 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 thing of perfectionist. You know, I think Spirit did a really good job explaining that because you know that's the one thing about it is that we have to understand that you know when we get these channel messages, don't boost yourself up and be like, "Ooh, I explained that so well. I'm so sophisticated." No, it's Spirit working through you. These are Spirit words. I can't take credit for that. I can't I can't boast. And, and make it seem like this was all me. This was spirit. I'm just the vessel that spirit is using. This could be one of the reasons why some of you are missing out in love. Is because you're too busy trying to be a perfectionist. But my relationship got to look just like this. Well, this man got to pray with me every night. He got to fast with me. No, we don't. Because the Bible says that you could be so righteous that you cover your entire family. Yes, you want them to eventually get it and to build a relationship for themselves, but it can't be forced. And that's the one thing about it, that when we're in this perfectionist state, that we want to force things upon people. You got to be like this. Instead of giving them free will. Knight of Cups. Something that's getting ready to rush in. It's an offer that's getting ready to rush in. And with the offer getting ready to rush in. It's saying the two of swords. That some of you are getting ready to make a difficult decision. And it said the difficult decision that you are getting ready to make. is the three of pentacles and the three of pentacles that talks about teamwork <laughs> low key like this combination <laughs> some of you are in a relationship and you're not with the person you're supposed to be with and that's the difficult decision that you're going to have to make because when this person come in you're going to be in a full committed relationship 
<laughs> but you know, everything has been telling you that this is not the person that you're supposed to be with, but you have been so hard headed, leave, you know, and you could still be there because of this state of perfectionist, being a perfectionist that you are like, oh, I'm not leaving my marriage because my marriage got to be perfect. That God said, death do us part. That, you know, I got to live up to this. You know, my mama, you know, stayed in a marriage for 50 years. But was your mom happy the entire time? Look, I mean, when we think about some of the older people and the amount of time they stayed in relationship, you know, the time that they stayed in a relationship doesn't mean it, it time doesn't mean that a situation is healthy. Time doesn't mean that this was a bliss 50 year marriage. And this could be part of your issue of with this being this perfectionist where it's like, well, no, you know, I can go through the 17 years of misery. My mama did that. Okay. Or you can admit that you made a mistake in choosing the wrong person. That maybe you rushed into this marriage and the person that you're with now was only supposed to be a season and a lesson, but you made it a lifetime. Because that's the one thing about being a perfectionist is that we don't like to admit our wrong. We don't like to deal with reality. And you have it with the Page of Pentacles, which is the Page of Pentacles that talks about manifestation. And then, you know, to put hurt to uh, to put hurt to this, you know, injury is saying that this is going to be something that's going to be public. <laughs> that, you know, and it's like, what you going to do? You're going to try to, you know, keep the person you with and then just keep this person on the side. I don't think that's going to work. But th that's your overall energy to somebody that you are, you're <laughs> You're in it. I mean, it's not funny. <laughs> it's not funny. Stop laughing. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> These are real situations. These are real lives we're, we're talking about. <laughs> Ooh, somebody's going to be in a messy ass situation. What do you do? But an offer is getting ready to come in. And it's going to force you to make a difficult decision about a teamwork. Maybe you're going to make your relationship polygamy. I don't know. Or maybe you're going to leave this person and, you know, get with the person that's getting ready to come in. Because the person that's getting ready to come in, they have an offer. They have an offer of love. <laughs> you have as the crossing energy, you have the Ten of Wands, which talks about being overburdened. You have it paired with the Ten of Cups. And the Ten of Cups is all about love. And it's saying that right now your love is just completely overburdened. And it's because of the Five of Wands. You guys fight and argue every single day. Every single day is something else. This person is draining the shit out of you. This is the reason why you were supposed to leave this person, but you're staying put. You have the crowning energy as the Empress, which talks about self-development. And, you know, it's funny how the, the crowning energy is right above the overall energy. The overall energy is saying that an offer is getting ready to come in and you're going to have to make a dis, um, decision. And it, um, if you make this difficult decision of joining this person, you're going to end up being an empress instead of fighting and arguing that, you know, um, you're going to end up you're, you're going to end up happy. You have the star card, which is all about hope and inspiration. And the star card is another card about being seen, just like the six of wands. And so that could be one of the things that you're experiencing in this relationship is that you feel that you're not seen. That you're there and they know your present exists. But you're not being seen. You like all this body and curve that I got. And you don't see this. Titty sitting up. 
booty just right and you don't see all this, <laughs> some of you, you just don't feel seen. Uh, like this person is, is they just don't care. They, they could have a very nonchalant attitude like this person, especially with the Six of Wands being here, which talks about public recognition, re recognition. It don't even mean, it don't even have to mean like this person is going to put you on a public platform so quickly. This could just be like taking you out to the movies, going on dates, because this could be what this person is not doing that you just don't feel seen. It's like, when was the last time we did a date night, but we can argue, you know, when was the last time we went out to eat and stuff like that, but we can argue. And it's saying that, you know, this is going to end up being a cycle that you're going to stay in this bliss. You're going to stay in this, this love and hope that, you know, some of you, they're going to be like, you know, man, last year it was Jonathan, but now we got a mark. You know, who is he? <laughs> yep. This is somebody, somebody is, you, you're leaving a relationship. That's what you're being, that's what you're being called to do. You know, even the card at the bottom of the deck, which I'm jumping, you know, um, that's why you have the nine of wands and the nine of wands. It talks about the testing of your faith up. Oh, and if you pass this test, right, you got the sun card. The sun card is the happiest card in the deck. Somebody I mean, it sounds messy, and some of y'all look like, ah, how is that holy? <laughs> Rashad, you telling somebody to leave their relationship? I'm not. But, I mean, the cards here is like, you already been getting nudges to leave this relationship for the longest because you're overburdened and you're doing all the work yourself. You know, this is not somebody cheating and they went into a full-blown affair and now they're leaving their person and they're going into the relationship that they had an affair with. No, 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 no. This is not it. This is a person that you're staying in a connection because of this state of perfection. Appearance. What society says. What mama says, what daddy says, that you're staying in here because of appearances to reach this level of perfection. But spirit is like, this person is not for you. And it's like, no matter what this person do, you cover it up in this mixture of what you created as perfectionist and holiness. This person done slapped the shit out of you and being you every single day. <clears throat> and you cover it with this mixture of perfectionist and holiness and say, but God said we're not supposed to get a divorce. <clears throat> you keep allowing this person to get away with everything and you're robbing them of the opportunity of growing. This, they, they can't grow as long as you're always there making excuses for them. Because you spread it with that, you know, mixture of perfection and perfectionist and holiness. Y'all are going to you could have this person could have cheated on you multiple times, and every time you just like, oh, I gotta work it out, just my marriage. There's a difference between perfectionist and holiness. Seven of Pentacles in your challenge position, which talks about long-term view. You got to think about the long-term view in this. Can you really deal with this abuse for the rest of your life? Or is it time to cut it loose? You have as the clarifiers for this, you have discernment. You have the Nine of Pentacles, which is all about discernment. You have the Death card, which talks about an ending. And you have Justice, which talks about fairness. Some of you are literally in a relationship right now and this Knight of Cups is getting ready to come in so that you can be removed from your connection because this connection is not serving your highest good at all. All you're doing is fighting and arguing. This person was never meant for you. They were only supposed to be there for a season and you made them into a lifetime. 
And God is like, I never told you to marry this person and to be with this person for life. But it's all because of this. It's all because of this mixture of perfection. You got to be so perfect. But what is the neighbors going to say? Girl, this is your life. Who cares what the neighbor's going to say? I like this. Bet, and I've never seen this card either. I, 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 like, I like how when I get new cards that i never seen. Bet on yourself and take chances. Reach your dreams. You got this. Yep, you finna bet on yourself and take a chance real quick. Um, because somebody is about to leave a connection and go instantly into another connection. And the end card at the bottom of the deck. When you find something that excites you, go all in and enjoy the ride. Uh-huh. You better go all in on this new person. Somebody is in a relationship and you are about to... Your people are going to be talking. That's that public recognition. People are going to be talking. They're like, girl, she was just with Jonathan. And now she was, uh, now she was Steve. Girl, I know. <laughs> I know she was cheating on him. No, you won. You stay faithful in this connection all because of this mixture of holiness and perfection that you're doing. Somebody is getting out of a connection. Well, you're not you you're I mean you're still in a connection now, but you're gonna I mean you're gonna eventually end up getting out for the night of cup. But this is a test of your faith, so it doesn't mean that you have to leave. The choice is still yours, but you know this connection is not serving your highest good. I mean, this is domestic violence at its highest, verbally and physically abused. That's that old school thinking, thinking that you're supposed to stay with an abuser, but he a provider. I mean, who cares if I get black eyes here and there? He a provider. Didn't you tell me you told me to marry a king and a provider? Girl, a king ain't gonna be beating the shit out of you like that. But somebody, somebody is getting ready to it, you're you're about to get out of your connection and instantly go into something else. And this Knight of Cups is gonna Knight of Cups is gonna come in and change your world. But somebody, uh Spirit was saying that uh some of you could be meeting somebody. And completely move out of the state that you're in now. Completely move out. Well, that was that was a message. That was an unexpected message. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. <laughs> but it's here now. <laughs> That's exactly what you're going to be feeling. Didn't see you coming, but you're here. Let's go get coffee. <laughs> I mean, I don't encourage cheating. I don't encourage cheating or uh, an affair, but this is not what it is. This is not an affair. This is not cheating. This is you being in a miserable situation, and it's all because you're trying to live up to these expectations that you'll never live to, and you know that this person that you're with is the wrong person for you, that you took a one-night stand, that you turned into a friends with benefits, that you turned into a relationship, that you turned into a marriage, and now the dick ain't dicking anymore. Like, I mean, the dick just not digmatizing you anymore that you're living under this illusion of perfectionist mixed with holiness thinking that it's one and the same. You're still going to be holy after this. You're just going to be holy and happy. <laughs> that's, the, that's the title for this one. Holy and happy. <laughs> Oh, man. Stop mixing the two. Holiness and perfectionist cannot be mixed. They're two completely different things. And people that try to strive to this level of perfectionist, they always have a heavy fall. Always. Always have a heavy fall. Good luck. Somebody is coming rushing in. They're about to give you a cup of love that you never had before. <laughs> Better be filled with milk and cinnamon. 